Dire team ban. What is up? We're here with the Dota 2 Canada Cup. We're in Group D. This is the second game. Loser's game. A loser of this match will be eliminated. Winner will go on with one more shot to make the playoffs. We have Cato versus the Five Kings. I'm M.Y. John, and I'm joined by my co-caster, El Presidente. How are you doing, sir? I am doing quite well. How about you? Good, good, and glad to be back. So we get to see some action. Two teams I know nothing about, which is always nice. Uh, we see a little Canadian logo for Cato, so I'm going to assume they're from Canada. In fact, I think both of these teams are probably from Canada. Uh, Twilight 2008 is a familiar name, but that's about the only one I see in the game that I recognize. Yeah, I, I haven't casted either of these teams either, so this should just be exciting to see what kind of uh, pocket strats both teams decide to pull out this game. and Or they could play very standard Dota. It's hard <laughs> yep. to say. And we're seeing some standard bands come out here with the Batrider. And next, taken out early, Lone Druid added to that. We're looking for a fourth and final ban. It's going to be Wisp from the Five Kings. So first pick is in the hands of Kato. See what they want to go for here. Jargheart has been a popular first pick. There's also Darkseer. And, uh, a couple of the supports on the board like Shadow Demon wouldn't be a bad option either. And uh, not knowing the teams is going to be a little bit difficult to speculate what they're going to go first. Well, honestly, okay. Ooh. And this is a hero that we haven't seen much at all in this whole tournament because usually in the second banning phase he gets banned out. But, of course, a lot of professional teams prioritize Clockwork very much so because of his uh, superior ability to not only offlane but control fights and even go middle. But he did receive a minor nerf in the last patch where the BKBs are no longer affected by the cogs. So uh, he has fallen off a tiny bit, but not that much. Yeah, it's definitely sizable. I still think the best build for Clockwork, who's oriented more towards ganking, should be maxing out that battery assault over all of his abilities first. It's just because it does so much damage once you max it out. It really does. And then the pickups from the side of the Five Kings are Gyrocopter and Keeper of the Light. So going back to Gyrocopter being one of the top hero picks, and it seems like that trend is going to continue throughout. A Shadow Demon is going to be added to the Clockwork for Kato. So... So far, nothing too out of the ordinary. Keeper of the Light getting prioritized pretty high here. Uh, Gyrocopter and Keeper of the Light is going to mean you have a lot of uh, ability to clear waves. It could be used in a defensive capability. Not too likely it's going to be offensive. So it's looking like the Five Kings are leaning towards a defensive tri lane so far. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if they go for the Rubik as their last pick just to kind of round out their defensive lineup. It also gives them a lot of counter push and later on actual push if they need to. Uh, also, with the Rubik, it kind of closes off a lot of options for Kato. It makes Bane a lot less likely. It makes heroes like Lina and Lion slightly less likely because you don't really want to give up those big ultis. So. Yeah, and we see this is the first time we've really seen a wide open draft. A lot of teams have identified their core early on in the drafts. With this new style, it's hard to kind of adapt to. It takes a longer time to feel out how you want to draft your team composition. But here we do see a little bit more ambiguous. Gyrocopter probably going to be in the tri lane, but could also be a solo. Clockwork could be a solo, but we don't know where. So both the teams have wide open opportunities moving forward, and it makes the bands a little bit more interesting. We see a couple of support bands come out from the Five Kings in the form of Visage and Nyx Assassin. Quap taken out by Kato. I I also wouldn't be surprised if Kato decided something a little bit strange and go for a Clockwork tri lane, which is definitely possible thanks to how much damage Clockwork puts out in uh, through his Rocket Barrage, uh, not Rocket Barrage, Battery Assault in particular. So, you know, you just set it up with the disruption, you run in, you cogs, and then damage comes out. Especially now that Darkseer has been picked up, that would be even less of a shock to me. Yeah, Darkseer being picked up here in the second round, and that is a valid option as well. Clockwork is one of those heroes you can work in so many different ways, and we've seen teams like Alliance do that before, put them in a tri lane. We've seen teams like Rattlesnake uh, put them in any lane at all. I mean, sometimes wouldn't be too surprised if we saw those crazy teams put them in the jungle and just roll with it. But either way, uh, we'll see exactly where he's going to end up as Kato starts to define their roster a little bit more specifically by this next pick in theory. Uh, they're seeing they're up against a Darkseer now. Darkseer, of course, a versatile hero, but there's nothing for him to really prey upon on Kato's side quite yet. So if I was Kato... There's certain types of heroes you can avoid from here on, and Lina's going to be a great pick to add to the Shadow Demon for pretty obvious reasons. Yeah, so that's going to be a very offensive trial, and I wouldn't be surprised if they want to go 3v3 here. And on top of that, I'm feeling maybe another Luna pickup, which has been seeing quite a lot of play so far in this tournament. I'm, I'm hard-pressed to think of what 
what other strong Trilan carries are still left with the Life Sealer and the Gyro kind of already taken out of the pool for Kato. Yeah, it's going to be a tough decision for them. I, unless they want to go a little bit unorthodox with it, they could pull oh. Skywrath. Wow, we haven't seen Skywrath yet. This is a hero I really like. The range on his slow is ridiculous. Uh, the only thing that kind of is infuriating is the amount of time it takes to reach a target, but I think there's a lot of potential with Skywrath, and a lot of people are going to figure that out as we realize how good that silence is. It lasts forever. Well, absolutely the case. If you just wanted a silence that lasted forever, you're better off picking Bloodseeker. Yeah, but at a range and at uh, not the cost of having a Bloodseeker in your lineup because, of course, hey, you're hey, trading off a see, lot more. I see some excellent Bloodseeker picks by Alliance. There's Luna, but excellent Bloodseeker picks by Alliance where they just pop that Blood Rage on Gyrocopter and laugh. Yeah, um, it could work sometimes, but it's definitely putting in well, a lot. Let, let, let's, go through, let's go through his advantages, and then we'll go through his disadvantages because he needs both. And incidentally, Skyrath does share some of these disadvantages, right? Number one, advantage. Strong Chaser thinks the Thirst. Uh, even more so now that he gets an armor bonus from it. Blood Rage is a pretty ridiculous silence if used on strong casters. Heroes like Lena and Shadow Demon get completely shafted if they can't use spells. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, his last hitting is actually really good because he has really good stat gains and a really good base damage. And his sustain in lane is fantastic. So he's just a really strong ganking hero. His late game is okay at best. If you use Blood Rage on yourself, that's a lot of damage that you can add, but, you know, it's not the best. His biggest disadvantage is he's countered by a 135 gold item, mm -hmm. right? And you have Bloodseeker in your lineup, so it, it, it's like if you get matched up against certain lane people, it's a major problem for Bloodseeker, right? Mm -hmm. That said, Skyrath Mage is kind of in the same boat. He is also countered by that 135 gold item. It is similar in that regard, but Skyrath... I think they're going to solo middle, but uh, his damage Support's output back. in a burst instance is going to be a little bit higher than that of the Bloodseeker if he can land his skills. Well, absolutely true. You have to talk about, when you talk about supporting potential of a Bloodseeker, it's also much higher. You drop that Blood Rage on someone like a Gyrocopter, or you can even draft a lineup around a, a Drow Ranger, right? And now you have some serious damage. Yeah, we like the long range slow, the range harass, and a couple other things, but... There are definitely some advantages, and we'll see some people there, eventually try and reintegrate him again ever since There's that no buff. lane that Bloodseeker will lose outright, though. As long as he can get a couple <laughs> of last hits here and there, he's going to stay up, which is his big advantage. But that said, you really do need a very specific lineup to make Bloodseeker work. Yes. Okay, and we do see... So Sven was just picked up a moment ago. That's the fifth pick on the side of Five Kings. So Sven, probably going to be Sven. a support Sven since they already have a gyrocopter. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a support Sven. Uh, definitely, I think, much better than carry Sven. He doesn't need that many items to put out damage in the mid-game. Yes, you lose that glorious one-shot potential with you know that one big Daedalus crit, but frankly, banking on that, it's, it's flashy and it looks great, but it's not something that's going to happen all the time. So I do think support Sven's a little bit more reliable. He's still capable of putting out plenty of damage without major item sources, and the AoE stun is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe something like Skeleton King could trade in for the support Sven ever since the Mortal Strike buff, but we're not seeing it happen. Quantic did try it once, but it didn't really work out for them. But eventually, I'm going to see... Skeleton is still very much a carry, though. He doesn't really have the support ability well, that Sven does. Mortal Strike it's... scales better than any ability that... Sven has, and then of course he can come back in the middle of the fights, and he has such a low cooldown stun that I, I think he has some potential. We'll have to wait and the see. The problem is you're talking a low cooldown stun with very little damage in comparison to some other stuns, and it's only a single target compared to Sven's AoE. The armor aura and the amount of damage Sven puts out is going to be much higher than what Skeleton King can put out with low items. Yeah. And then we see a Templar Assassin, who's actually just who I thought they had never picked in this tournament, at least for the games I've seen so far. Definitely a, a good hero. Uh, of course, it's become a little bit more difficult to play him. At, and in this game, it looks like the middle matchup is going to be against the Skywrath Mage. And it seems like a matchup the Tem Templar Assassin can excel in. Definitely got a lot of last hits, a lot of denies. So we'll see how it actually pans out. Cater should have picked OD. That's the one that they should have picked. <laughs> oh, yeah. Makes Skyrath Mage extra sad. Because it, it kills his ability to harass and his ability to last hit. 
Yeah, Skywrath is definitely another one that falls victim to OD. We have been hearing the cries ODOP, but no a solution yet. We'll see if eventually teams can figure it out. I'm going to go over the Kato lineup. They're on the dire side. We have Let Micro Flow on Luna, N3 on Lena, Fro on Shadow Demon. We have Miss Mayhem on the Clockwork, and that leaves Akroma playing the Templar Assassin. On the top lane for T5K, the Five Kings, we're seeing Twilight 2008. That was an awful year for Twilight. On the Gyrocopter, we're going to see FRZ on the Sven, supporting on that offensive try lane. The stand-in Presto will be taking the Keeper of the Light in the mid lane. Enko's Got Magic will be playing that Darkseer, and that's not going to be a fun lane for him. And in the solo safe is Got Them Magic. This is going to be a bad. really bad lane for Skywrath. Look at this tri-lane he's up against. He's not even going to be able to poke his head out because Disruption can catch him and follow up with Light Strike Ray. Uh, I'm uh, not sure because Clockwork can definitely weather the storm in this tri-lane pretty effectively, but same cannot be said of Skywrath. This is looking like the lane setup so far is in favor of Kato, in my opinion. Big problem? <laughs> Kato know it's there. Kato know the tri-lane is there. Right, where T5K don't. Yeah, so that's going to be an issue as well, and uh, we're going to see exactly what they can do against it. This is going to be, uh, if Skywrath can stay alive and get his levels, that's really imperative on him, uh, whereas Clockwork, you know, he can sacrifice a couple levels here and there. Uh, he's going to be versatile when it gets to the mid-game. If you're able to shut down the Skywrath, it, same cannot necessarily be said, because you know he's going to be able to be taken down in a couple hits if everything goes good for TA, or even if he gets out-leveled by Lena. It could be an ugly, ugly showing. So we'll see exactly how it does ensue as a couple of heroes are looking to deward and take away some pulling options. Here we go, Kato taking a little bit of damage. Let Microfly get hit by one of the nukes from Skywrath. But uh, we'll see how soon they want to be aggressive on this lane. Mid lane, actually, rotation from Enkos is going to take him to the Illusion Rune. Akroma, sitting in the lane, is going to continue the last hit. This is going to be a really nice lane for Templar Assassin, I'd imagine. It's not quite as good as being up against a, a Skywrath, but uh, I, I really don't buy the Darkseer dominating Templar Assassin thing because the last hit potential from Templar Assassin is too high. I completely agree. I do think the lane generally favors the TA. The only thing is that Meld should not be picked up in this lane because it really won't do you any good unless you're planning on using it to get a quick armor reduction burst onto your Darkseer opponent. Yeah, that is a valid point as well. And we'll see if he does opt for that or not. But Akroma early on is just going... He spent all of his gold, so he picked up a circlet and a Slippers of Agility. This is a really interesting build, not going for the early bottle, uh, whereas t the Darkseer was actually pursuing him under the tower. <laughs> Almost went crazy for a moment there. He thought about diving that. That would have been something wild. There's only one tick left on the shield, but of course he would have taken a lot of damage from the tower. So that would have been a crazy aggressive move early on from Darkseer. But uh, as I was saying... This uh, is an interesting starting build from Templar Assassin. It seems to be leaning towards something like uh, the early Wraith Band, which isn't something we see too often. We do see that basically Got the Magic is pretty much forced out of lane. He's already using up most of his mana, just spamming the Arcane Bolt, and that's never where you really want to be. The lane is just pushing towards Kato's tower here, so soon he's going to be forced to really just stay out of lane, and there's not much you can do about it. Unlike Clockwork, who can sort of just fire Rocket Flares to get last hits here and there, there's really nothing he can do. He can try to run up and get an Arcane Bolt off, but Arcane Bolt doesn't have the range of a, a Rocket Flare. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised they let him get as many levels as he has. He is level 3. Uh, considering there's level 2 on both of the supports on the side of Kato, there's a lot of kill potential here. Uh, if they wanted to press this really hard, but it looks like they're content with just keeping him further back, preventing him from CSing. He has picked up a couple, only two, though, with that ability of the Arcane Bolt you were talking about. Uh, meanwhile, middle lane, it looks like it's 10 against 11, so the CS in the middle is very even. That's going to lean towards uh, probably the favor of Templar Assassin in terms of being able to excel in the early slash middle game, just sheerly based off damage output. And top lane, Miss Mayhem not getting as many levels as the Skywrath Mage, but that's not too big of a concern for him. Now he's out of mana, and he doesn't have one level on Cogs yet, which is an interesting build. Usually you get that just to be a little bit more safe, but he's playing it pretty risky up here, and that could be why he is a little bit behind in terms oh, of experience. There we go, they're pinging on Got the Magic. 
The ping. Can they get in range for the disruption? They can now because of the lights of oh. Luna. Beam. Oh, they missed the stun, though. Poorly timed by N3. That wasn't even close. And now auto attacks are going to follow, but not enough damage to get it. That uh, was just awful. Uh, this timed as if it was like a torrent or something. It was like instant. I don't know exactly what Lena was doing, but uh, hopefully he can rectify that because that was a perfect opportunity. If the stun had hit, it would have been the easiest kill. Chrome is going to roam for an early rune, but he actually misses its top, so there's an invisibility rune top, and Darkseer sitting on a bottle is going to probably be able to roam for that. He will surge and get to that. So empty bottle TA. They don't even have an upgraded courier on the side of Kato, so not going to see any bottle crowing, at least at this stage of the game. And that's going to give Darkseer a little bit of an edge uh, in a lane that this is going to be probably is going to break even. And go, he's just going to stand near him. Mm -hmm. Oh, or he's going to use vacuum instead of just standing near him. A uh, little bit. Uh oh. Oh. The dive. Oh. Chroma might actually go down here. He does get refraction off just in time, but still, Enkos burns right through the refraction and gets the kill onto TA. That was really odd. Uh, you think TA would know better than to stand there, but uh, nonetheless, Enkos, with so much more region, was just able to brute force through him. And interesting. I mean, that's another death that shouldn't happen. We say this all the time in these middle lane matchups. Fro's actually going to catch Enkos here with a soul catcher as well as disruption, but a chroma just TPing and there's going to be no real follow up. Top lane, though, we have Frizz going on top of Miss Mayhem. Presto's there as well, but they don't pursue any further. Miss Mayhem turns around. Rather bold turn coming out from him, but Sven now granted some mana. They have to be more careful now, but it looks like they'll cease and desist. Yeah, it's actually a huge problem when you look at the last hits as well. 35 on Gyro versus the 22 on Let My Let Micro Flow. That's a big problem. Not only is this offensive tri lane not getting the the kills that they need, they're not even getting the last hits they need. So yeah, it's just all adding up. You're right, and this is going to be a big concern. I mean, Skyrath is. Level 4 now is going to get hit by Disruption now. Can they chain it up better? N3 looking for the Light Strike Array. It's going to hit. And this time, they execute properly, get the kill onto Sky Wrath Mage that they needed. And now the tower is going to take some extra pressure. But that is a very good point. If we're looking at that CS, 40 CS on Gyrocopter. He's having a phenomenal time on the top lane. And with a Gyrocopter and a Dark Seer in your team, you're not too concerned about this TA if she doesn't get a really good start. There's a lot to deal with her if she falls behind in farm. So it's going to be really crucial for TA to kind of right the ship, get the CS, and provide some kind of uh, farm to back up her aggression. Otherwise, between Flat Cannon and the Ion Shell, she's going to tick down rather quick in the middle of these fights. Yeah, we do see that she is just falling way behind levels. Darkseer now has two levels on a Chroma. Luckily, Darkseer doesn't really need that, that many levels to be super effective. Generally, 10 and 11 are as, as many as he needs, while TA will scale better, ultimately, in the end. But, the, again, it's still a problem that cannot be underestimated. Just having a higher level Dark Star can always be a problem, just because level 4 Ion Shell hurts for so much at 90 damage a second. And this is the next problem for Kato. Since top lane is going so well for Gyrocopter, they're just going to rotate the supports down bottom. And they actually get a D ward by the river spot. We see Frizz making his way into the lane with the Skywrath Mage. Skywrath Mage is only level 4, but he still puts a good amount of damage. Frizz walks into N3. I think they actually didn't see each other somehow, which is interesting. But there's a TP out from Luna actually going to the mid lane to chase onto Enkos, who was diving, but won't catch him there. But bottom lane now has turned into a three versus two, and this can go really bad considering the only two in lane are bolt supports. We're going to see Frizz look for the initiation here. Here's the arcane bolt. There it is. Frizz hits the stun on top of N3. There's a nice illuminate coming out from Keeper, and this is going to be a death for N3 as it gets hit by disruption to try and save him for a moment, but it will not be enough. So down goes the Lena as they are abandoned by their carry, but uh, this is all generated because of the fact that top lane won so well for Twilight 2008 on that gyrocopter. He can stand it up there alone easily against this Clockwork, who's only level 6 now. Yeah, this is this is actually becoming a huge problem. Well, Clockwork does finally have his level 6, and that means he can start roaming. The problem is that mid lane is very solidly in favor of Ankos, who's level 8 to the level, what is it, 7 now on the TA. And the bot lane still going very well for T5K with Skyrath Mage still getting a sizable amount of farm. Got a kill on the bot lane. Still has 12 last hits. It's a Clockworks 12, 13 now. And, you know, he's still getting the levels and he's still getting the XP. So it's a big deal. Yep. And then they're going to try and add to that lead. And now as Frizz is setting up on the bottom lane, Chroma has made his way down here. Uh, 
think they're trying to give middle lane to Luna a little bit. They're trying to get Luna to catch up, but they can't really afford to sacrifice that because you mentioned how far behind TA is on levels, and they're actually going to initiate here on Gotham Magic. TA is going on the back end of the fight, though. We do see the Illuminate's going to hit onto Fro. Fro's going to pop off his magic wand, regain a lot of health, and back up. Frizz is now taking damage from Akroma. In comes the call down as Twilight 2008 makes his way into the fight. Akroma's now trying to retreat. Doesn't have any levels in meld. As you mentioned before, it would have been a, a little bit frivolous to get. There's a stun comes on Akroma. Akroma almost certainly going to die, but it does get the kill onto Sven through the Sonic Blades at the very least. So it turns it into a trade. It's a lopsided trade, but a trade nonetheless. Yeah, definitely in favor, again, of T5K. Sven is a support hero in this particular matchup, so it's not really that big of a deal. He's on low health, and he doesn't really care. On the other hand, T5K is just setting... Him, uh, Kato is just setting themselves behind with uh, Akroma losing his own life again. Second death. And he's not really getting much oh. out of these either. We see the bolts stacking up on Kato, oh. and the ultimate comes out... Oh man, that damage from Gotham Magic using the Mystic Flare as well as the Concussive Shot and the Arcane Bolt. It just all added up to well enough to kill any of the support heroes. And he happened to pick Lina, and there was no disruption. I'm not sure if it was on cooldown. He had enough mana, it looks like. So maybe just blindsided by the fact that it all came out so quickly. Enkos in the middle lane is putting some harass damage on Let My Crow Flow. And three's coming in. He's going to look for a light strike. It actually hits, but they do not have enough follow-up. Oh. oh, maybe they do. Miss Mayhem from the back end is going to catch Cogs. And Ed Darks here in the middle of it is just trying to get the Iron Shell damage. And Lena, and once again, they get a trade. It's a three versus one. And Enkos somehow makes out like a bandit and gets one of those kills on Lena. Yeah, he does have the kill afterwards. So Lena still gets some XP from all of that. So it's still, and, and the Siskel, of course. So that's yeah. all a big bonus in favor of Kato. Also, again, comes down to higher priority targets. Anko's worth more, much, much more than Lena is here. Oh, Micros. Uh, yeah, middle lane, concussive shot, and arcane bolt come in, and it's enough to finish off Let Micro Flow. So this is the part of the game. Skywrath Mage is dealing a whole lot of damage. Only 60 second cooldown of Mystic Flare at the level it is right now. It costs 350 mana, which is a lot, but he does have arcane boots, and we'll see. He's probably going to be working towards something like a four staff next, but he doesn't have anything really going towards that quite yet. Top lane, though, Twilight has been left alone. No one has been in this lane for quite some time now. They've been trying to find uh, avenues for other heroes to find farm, whether it be putting Luna mid or putting uh, Clockwork mid to go for the ganks. So Twilight is going to continue to get big. He's now getting closer to finishing up a Yasha, which is an interesting first item choice. But I kind of like the idea of getting that Manta because against the Clockwork, Manta can occasionally, if you got lucky, push you out of that cog trap. And then, of course, that will save you a lot of stress. Well, more importantly, if you pop the Manta in the cogs, you're splitting the damage from just how much damage Rocket Barrage, uh, Battery Assault does. you got to split that up a bit. So that's also very nice. One of the big things to consider is that Skyrath Mage really needs mana regen. Like, sustain... Oh! Wow. Another kill on bot lane. Oh, bot lane, Akroma. How do I miss that? Oh, because I was watching the rap behind it. Akroma actually gets taken down by Enkos, and I didn't... I was seeing... If you're looking at the map, you can see N3 and Fro were rotating in. And I was trying to keep an eye on how they would double back, but it looks like instead they're going to go back to his middle. They got the magic. It's caught out here. He's going to get hit with a disruption. Time of the light strike oh. and misses again. Skyrath Mage is going to just barely survive. Yep. Wow. Once again, Lena coming out a little bit short. And it is a shame because that would have been a really crucial kill for them. Now Shadow Demon gets stunned off by Frizz. Enkos is coming in. He gets the vacuum pulls two towards him. He's going to throw down the wall and an Iron Shell will now fly on him as well. Concussive shot coming in from the side and followed up with an ultimate. There it is. Lena's going to go down. The disrupted Shadow Demon is going to drop as well. So... Just huge problems coming out of Kato. Their supports are just not coordinating well. They're... That's two kills that they could have made that were just uh, trounced, that were failed, just because they couldn't land a light strike array. And had they got that, we, we would see that this Skyrath Mage wouldn't be really doing as well as he would be right now. Instead of being 3-1-3, three, and three, he'd probably be 1-3-2, and uh, two, maybe. Right? Yeah. They wouldn't, and it's, he wouldn't have been able to get those kills. And we don't mean to harp on this one player, but it's not a particularly hard combo to land, to be frank. Uh, I mean, you just have to put in a little conscious effort for the stun, even if you're off by a small margin on the after effect, 
and you're late, it's still probably going to hit because of the AoE. In most cases, we do see Presto get jumped on here by Miss Mayhem. He does have the battery sold active, and it will be enough to solo kill him. Miss Mayhem has to abandon shift, though, because a lot of heroes are rotating in. We see the Surge Darks here coming from the river, so a nice little pickoff for them there. But they're going to need a lot more of those. And uh, considering if you click on TA, we can see his farm consists of absolutely nothing. If you click on Luna, she has drums. That's probably the most expensive item on the entire side of Kato right now. We're 14 minutes into the game. It's not looking too great. Great. And now Gyrocopter having that Yasha in tow is actually going to transition over towards building a BKB, it looks like, which will be nice to keep him alive from a potential Laguna Blade or Eclipse. And now middle lane, we do see Concussive Shots going to fly. Illuminate just barely going to clip. And now we see Disruption trying to save off, let Micro fly, but he gets hit by the entirety of the Mystic Flare. Enkos is in deep. It looks like he's actually going to die, but they're going to get another kill onto Lina as Skywrath Mage is going to be able to finish that off. Fro just barely alive. The Illuminate will not connect. And a response TP is there and now. Clockwork coming in from the side. So another nice engage. It's a two for one trade in the end. And any kill on Luna is just going to set her further and further back. Fro may be in trouble here. Yes, one more auto attack will do the job. Or the Illuminate will get in instead and take the kill. So Keeper of the Light able to connect and take down Shadow Demon. And 12 to 5 is a kill lead. But it feels like the actual lead is far greater than that. If we look at the gold, it's over 7,500. Yeah, I completely agree. They just did not do the bottom lane as well as they needed to. And I think what they really need for God the Magic is sustain. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to go a Bloodstone on him, but, uh, or, or even something like an Atos. At least something that gives him something that can keep him on the field a little bit longer, even if it's buffer rather than just health uh, sustain regen. So they need something. The bottle isn't going to quite cut it once you start leveling up Mystic Flare. It just starts costing way too much. Yeah, the mana cost does get out of hand rather quickly. They do have a Keeper of the Light on the team, though, so a couple of Arcane Boots, Keeper of the Light, maybe make it possible for a while, but you're right, he will need something bigger. Uh, probably going to work towards... I, I still think he needs a Force Staff right now. A Chroma may be in trouble on the top lane. Concussive Shot's going to fly in. Chroma's going to get hit by the Rocket Barrage and the Mystic Flare, and he is dead. And that's basically uh, the summary of how this game has gone for him. Uh, I mean... He tries to poke his head out the farm a little bit, and he gets totally destroyed. He has absolutely nothing to his name, and that's got to be the most disappointing thing on the side of Kato. Uh, aside from the tri lane going horribly wrong, is that he should have at least gotten CS middle. He has 52 CS of 16 minutes. It's not really that great. He should have more denies than four, too, especially working against an Iron Shell Darkseer. I mean, I know Darkseer punches, but he doesn't punch particularly hard. One of the big problems, though, just comes down to the fact that a TA didn't really lane that well. And when we look into the mid game, right, we're just looking at all of the abilities that TF, uh, T5K have, right, the five kings, they have so many abilities that da do damage in very many small instances. The refraction doesn't even do that much against the rocket barrage, the mystic floor, the ion shell. You're, you're seeing a very ineffective uh, shield. Mm -hmm. And the tower goes down in the middle lane. Akroma now is going to get caught again. Vacuum tries to pull him back. Surge forward to pursue. He's going to get hit by the concussive shot from the side. There's the Mystic Flare. And it's going to absolutely drain through Akroma's HP. He's going to drop again in a moment here. And there he goes. Skyroth Mage getting the last hit with the Arcane Bolt. Now jump in from Miss Mayhem. He's going to catch two in the middle of the cogs. But Miss Mayhem is going to pay for this. Twilight's still surviving just barely. And now he will go down. Disruption. Looks like it saved Enkos from taking some extra damage. They're going to finish off. Off the Sven in the middle of the fight. Enkos is still trying to do work. Froze dropping pretty low. Vacuum will pull him in. Enkos does drop in the end, but they take down the Luna. It's a full team wipe in favor of T5K over Kato. They lose three, but still, this is a point in the game where if you're Kato, you cannot afford to trade at all. This is definitely going to be a Bloodstone. And did he just purchase something? Yup. Oh, that has to be a Bloodstone. <laughs> that's, that's a Bloodstone. <laughs> You don't, you don't buy those items without saying Bloodstone. That's He's 600 gold away from a Bloodstone, so he's definitely going to be going for that one next. Yeah, and that's going to be absolutely devastating if he's able to pick that up, considering how these fights are going. They already have 18 kills. It doesn't look like they're going to slow down at all. If he can get stacks in that Bloodstone, uh, he's going to get out of control uh, once he gets level 16. That 20-second cooldown can definitely be taken advantage of. Yeah, and especially with the Keeper Light funneling in mana, he's going to be able to get even more Mystic Flare casts off in the middle of the team fight. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see if T5K decided to pick up a Veil of Discord after the Bloodstone finishes up on Skyrath Mage, or maybe Natos. Frankly, I think for this particular matchup, mobility isn't going to be the biggest concern, because in the end, you're going to get caught by a lineup with Luna, with TA, 
with clockwork. There's no really running from that. So. Yep. We see middle lane. They're setting up for a gank. Rocket Flare is going to come in on top of Enkos, but looks like they decide not to gank. Enkos actually has full vision of them, so it wouldn't be too surprising. He's trying to counter bait this. It looks like Fro's thinking about coming in here. Oh. Instead, he goes to the side, vacuums Lena. There's also a disruption on the other end of combat, as it looks like Miss Mayhem's going to jump in on top of Got the Magic. He decides to Mystic Flare on top of himself, and actually, Presto knocks Miss Mayhem out of his own cogs with that blinding light, but Presto's now in a little bit of trouble. The DD on a Chroma. Uh, actually, no DD on the Chroma. That was the Chakra Drain. We still have fights going on, though, as Gyrocopter is going to pick off Clockwork and Shadow Demon. We have Enkos pursuing further. N3 under the Tower of Vacuum is going to be enough to take him down. Enkos may drop, though. He's trying to bottle up as quickly as he can, but the uh, Lucent Beam is going to be enough to actually catch him before he can retreat. So straight up 3 for 3 as it stands right now. Twilight's going to put a missile onto Let My Crow Flow and a bad stun from Frizz as he is now getting pinged heavy from his team, probably taking a little bit of trash. That was horribly missed. I wonder if he has the new smart cast things on, because I hear they're buggy a little bit right now because they are brand new. Yeah, smart casting is an interesting feature. Uh, definitely one of the better features that League of Legends runs, don't get me wrong. But, you know, it's definitely something that you have to get used to if you're going to start using it, because, you know, it's just based off where your mouse is and you click it, so it's a little bit faster in reaction, but you tend to sacrifice precision for it. Yeah, especially on single target abilities in crowded areas too. I'd imagine if you're something like a Bane in a big team fight and you're smart casting that ultimate, that could make you really nervous. So I'd be a little bit cautious before diving into that. For some abilities, it would be really nice, like skill shots. So we'll see. Eventually, I think a lot of players will adopt it. I think especially Valve is aiming to make the game more friendly to new players, and that is one way to do so pretty effectively. I say all of this, but I'm also one of those guys who sometimes dooms creeps. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I've ever doomed a creep, but I've definitely seen that happen pretty often. Uh, with the new doom, if you stand by the creep, you can keep him doomed for a long time. No, you can't, because they die in less than 10 seconds from <laughs> doom. It hurts so much. <laughs> Luna will spot them all out here, though. Oh, yeah, they're, they're going to actually catch Luna, so this gets turned around. Mayhem is actually going to push Skywrath out of it. Disruption may save Skywrath for another moment. Enkos is looking for something to do. Lucent uh, Eclipse flies, and he will be enough to finish off the Skywrath. Disconnect comes out from Sven, and what an awkward time to DC in the middle of the team fight. You can see Sven is walking away from the fight, but he doesn't have all too much mana, so uh, if he comes back in, he could pop off his Magic Wand, maybe throw a stun here or there, but uh, this is looking like the fight is actually shaping well for Kato. I, Clockwork, uh, excuse me, Gyrocopter's coming in from the side. He hasn't popped his BKB yet, so he's going to try and do some cleanup duty, I suppose. But it's... Well, fr frankly, I think Gyro's going to have a very easy time finishing off Luna right here. I don't think Let Micro is going to la last very long against Twilight. A Chroma might be able to finish, sweep up the supports in the back. I don't think he's going to fail at doing that. But the problem is right afterwards, you saw the Gyro to still deal with. Yeah. But it looks it looks like it's one of the better fights Kato have taken all game. Uh, I mean, starting off by taking out the Skywrath Mage before he can really get anything going is going to be nice. Of course, uh, we do see a Chroma going in for the attacks onto Presto. Presto is still surviving, and now the Blinding Light does fly. So here's the turnaround. Cooldown is going to just barely hit onto Let Micro Fry. He is almost dead. Enkos with the Ion Shell is going to pursue him. Maybe get in range to pick him off on the back end of the fight, though. Twilight now activates the BKB. He's piling the damage on the Miss Mayhem. We see Darkseer did finish off Luna. Clockwork is going to get the kill on Sven, but then two kills fly out instantaneously from Gyrocopter as he's going to finish off a Chroma as well to round out his triple kill and it's a 4 for 2 4 for 3 trade but once again trades they cannot afford to take especially with Gyrocopter living yeah and not only living but winning he's getting so many kills in these fights it's kind of ridiculous never mind that if he sells his ring of Ocula right now that's his Manta style yeah, he can have the completed Manta if he'd like. He can work towards more damage. I mean, if I was him, I don't know if I'm in a rush to get the Manta quite yet because there uh, isn't that much damage coming onto him. It's partially because of his positioning in the fights and Clockwork isn't opting to jump on him yet, but also because there just is a lack of damage on Kato, to be honest. I mean, the only damage sources are going to be the Eclipse and maybe an occasional Luna Blade, uh, Laguna Blade, excuse me. But uh, Templar Assassin isn't a real threat. You could even see... Keeper of the Light deal with her pretty effectively by blinding light her and running away. Yeah, I completely agree. I do feel that this gold will be better off spent instead picking up... Yeah, he actually buys a Demon Edge. 
Yeah, so he's going to go for the more aggressive approach, picking that damage item up. And this is going to allow them to be uh, able to potentially close this game out a little bit earlier. It's a slight risk, but since he has a BKB, it's not really a risk at all. Especially for... with the MKB bonus damage, the supports are not going to last long in these engagements. Mm -hmm. Another disconnect comes out from Sven, so he's not looking so good right now. This is the second one in a row. I don't know what's going on. Maybe a thunderstorm or something, wherever he's from. Hopefully he hammers it out, and <laughs> you can see the sarcasm coming out from Kato. Uh, Sven, I'm not even sure if he disconnected. I think someone can micro him, occasionally throw out a storm hammer, and a T5K would still look pretty solid. Yeah, I, I do think Sven's impact kind of fades after he gets, you know, a storm hammer and pops his uh, war cry because you know that's a lot of armor and then, then everyone's dying. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I completely agree. This is basically the gyro's getting real out of hand for Kato. They don't really have any strong answers to him. Uh, they don't have things like Bane's and feeble. They don't have things like a strong disable that goes through BKB. They don't even have the damage to burst him down. With 1,500 health and 17 armor, not even Luna or TA can really do enough damage at this point to, to break him, basically. Mm, yeah, and that's 17 armor not being near the mech on their team or anything like that, so there's even more to be had. We also see Lena's actually going to get jumped on here. Really good Stormhammer and cooldown on top of it. Fro's going to go ahead and disrupt her to keep her alive for a moment. She turns around, gets the Laguna Blade off. Gyrocopter will get that finishing blow on Shadow Demon. And now Chaos ensues as Darkseer picks up a kill on Lena. A couple of deaths for either team. It's actually one for three trade as it stands right now in favor of T5K on the dive. So really aggressive dive from them and it pans out. They only lose that Sven. So Sven can go ahead and disconnect now if he'd like. They're not going to just lose to Sven though. Uh, they're going to win, take the tower as well, and that's a very huge win. Bloodstone finally finished as well. Yeah, Bloodstone completed, so uh, it's a little bit of a shame. He's going to be disappointed he didn't have it before the fight. It seems like your best fight always happens beforehand, but actually he has eight charges. Did they change Bloodstone? Yeah, it, they added two charges, and they also added the active, so you can kill yourself with it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they, they wanted to make Bloodstone a little bit more viable later on as well as having the active. <laughs> can you misclick it and just... You can if you use it on the ground, so don't use it with quick casts on. <laughs> that would be really entertaining to see him run late. That active is really powerful, though, if you consider the amount of uh, heal it does to his teammates when he has high stacks on it. Uh, sometimes I'm looking for a cheese when people get healed up that much, but it's just the bloodstone with heavy, heavy feed. Hell, you don't even need a lot of stacks. It just starts at 400 heal. It's a huge heal. Yeah. It makes it really difficult to justify focusing a Skyrath Mage first. We see a vacuum on middle lane. Enkos is going to go on top of Fro. He gets hit by the concussive shot. It looks like the amount of purge is going to be used on Enkos to try and slow him down a little bit. The Mystic Flare is a little bit off base, but it looks like this should be enough damage to finish him off. Disruption is going to be used on Shadow Demon to delay this, delay the inevitable one more second. The punch from Skywrath Mage is going to finish him off. So an easy pick off there. Middle lane, there is an invisible TA. They know she's there somehow. I don't think they even respect the TA enough to have detection on their team. Got the magic is going to walk uphill and die. We see a stun coming out from Frizz onto TA, but TA is going to casually back off here. Miss Mayhem's got to catch him inside of the cogs, and there's a Laguna Blade to finish off the Sven. Buyback did come out from Skywrath Mage. He's going to rotate his way back towards the fight. And Coast pretty low on mana is going to get hit up with that Chakra from Keeper of the Light. He's going to run in a little bit Rambo-ish. Uh, we see Twilight is coming in from the side. He now has enough mana to fin oh, excuse me, enough money to finish off his MKB if he'd like, but he hasn't opted to do so quite yet. Now he is. It's going to be flying out on the courier in a moment. So this could be the timing they're looking for. Go bottom lane, take down that tier two, and then work towards either a Roche or a base tower. But uh, certainly still in the driver's seat. 29 to 17 is the kill lead. If we look at the graphs, we can see over 15,000 gold advantage, over 14,000 experience advantage for the five kings over Kato. Yeah, absolutely. And with that MKB pickup, it's going to be very difficult for Kato to win any future fights. Especially when it comes to siege environments. He can just be blasting you from low ground on creeps and not miss you while you're up on the high ground. So it's like, creeps can just be sitting right here. You could be sitting way back here. And as long as he has vision on you, you're getting hit. So, that's a pain to deal with. It certainly is. And we'll see exactly how this fight is going to go. Uh, 
I mean, if they don't focus the Gyrocopter, they've been using a lot of skills to take down Skywrath Mage in the past uh, battles, and now Gyrocopter gets himself into a bad situation. He does pop off the BKB, but it doesn't matter. He's going to zone a couple of heroes away with the use of the cooldown. He's going to pursue Miss Mayhem. Miss Mayhem is just getting out of range, though, and now it looks like they're going to turn around and kill Lina off very early on in the fight. Akroma is just trying to back away. Got the magic. He's going to get another kill on Shadow Demon. Twilight is going to go on to Akroma now. Akroma's going to pop into invisibility. And once again, I don't think there's any detection. But they're going to stand on it with an Ion Shell. They'll have a second Ion Shell in a moment. And uh, here comes Let My Crow Fly. He actually does get the kill on Gyrocopter with the Eclipse. So Akroma ends up being a good bait option. And he's going to get silenced now. And he's going to pay for it as everyone combines onto him. But uh, they get a kill on the Gyrocopter, one for three in the end. I don't know, it's not much, but it's something. It's something, uh, but Gyro spent most of his gold already, so it's like whoop de doo And they also get a tower again. And that's another three charges on Got the Magic, so he's a lot harder to kill again just now because he has so much more mana to, to, to just drop on your head. Yeah, now like, and three is actually honestly, in pursuit of Got the Magic. Surprised that they didn't pop the trap, they definitely could have caught him there. That was another missed play. We've seen a lot of miscues coming out from Kato. That he walked right over, probably could have been caught by both traps, or either trap, but neither of them were triggered from TA. Therefore, uh, Skyroth Mage able to just walk out. It would have been a nice kill to get him and take away some of those charges they had just given him so kindly. But uh, instead, he's going to walk away casually, and that would be in the end of that. I'm not exactly sure what his next option is. Obviously, you have your big options like Scythe of Ice, but you have your smaller, cheaper options like your Rod of a Toast, which does add to his tank and gives a sizable amount of ends as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if he does opt for that as his next item. As for Sven, he is working towards, it looks like, a BKB of his own. Definitely a smart item to grab, so you can't be blown to bits as well. Twilight, just farming up some gold, his own type of gold. Enkos is also, actually has a Shiva's. He finished the Shiva's already, so that's a big item. No mech, though. There's no mech on T5K. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Presto has one. On that. Yeah, Presto. And he also picks up some Sentry Wards, so he may actually have some invisibility detection in the next fight. Oh, what a luxury that will be. But instead, Twilight 2008 is just continuing to farm wherever he wants. I, I mean, if Kato think they have a realistic chance of getting back in this game, they should try and pop off some smoke ganks and just get five on ones against Twilight. Because you look at how far away from his team he was. He was in top lane and now he's just moving back towards middle lane. But his closest teammates were really far. If they can get some smokes off, uh, granted they'll have to expend a lot of skills and a couple of ultimates, it would be worthwhile to at least try and pursue some kills onto him. Yeah, the big thing is they have to slow him down. And the problem is if they don't, it's, gonna, it's gonna, pretty much going to pan out like this. Gyrocopter is going to finish his Manta, he's going to sell his Ocula, he's going to grab a Satanic, and you lose the game. Yeah, if they haven't already. and that's a, It's a reach to say they're already in the game, but we do see uh, rotation towards the Roche pit now. Twilight looks like he's going to start this off, so Roche is going to drop pretty quickly, considering the amount of damage, but the pings do fly out. Uh, of course, there is a Psionic Trap in there, so they know they're in the Roche, and... Uh, I mean, their best case scenario engages that clock jumps in and catches two to three and allows for really strong AoE follow up. We'll see if that's what they're able to do here. Ward is placed so they know that the dire team is coming. The side of T5K are going to pull out of it, and there's the missed clockwork ultimate. That's a go ahead call. La Micro Fly is going to pop off the Eclipse. He gets into the middle of the fight. Twilight hasn't popped off the BKB yet. He's taking a lot of damage before he did. He's going to turn around and be able to kill off Lena. He needs to back up, though. Chromo with a couple hits on him. He's surviving just barely. Sven has already dropped as well. Shadow Demon goes down in the back end of the fight, and now we do see a Chroma getting to deal some damage. Enkos is getting pretty low. He doesn't have any other abilities to cast off. He's already used the wall, but the fight has drifted away from it. There goes Skyrath. He goes down, Presto picks up a kill on Luna, and now Enkos gets healed up really heavily from the death of that Skywrath Mage, and he will continue to deal a lot of damage to Miss Mayhem. Miss Mayhem is going to die here. Akroma is the next target, and they're going to get a Drain Chakra there. He goes into the invisibility. The Sentry has already been used. They know where he is, though, so it's just going to be Ion Shell and Illuminate to get the kill sooner or later. Akroma going down. And that turns it into, once again, a, a team fight five in favor. Two. Five for two. Good call, because I totally lost count. And now they should be able to get a free Roche as well. I think a buyback did come out from Gyrocopter. No, he just DP back to base. Oh, that's right. He survived. Skywrath died, but, of course, his respawn cooldown is very low. 
Yeah, and, and, and Kato as well, their supports are so low level, they, they are already back before that fight even ended. So, kind of gives you an idea of how far behind Kato really are. Yeah, over 20,000 gold, over 20,000 experience, and essentially, Kato is just waiting for T5K to take the fight to their doorstep. They haven't really pressed onto the base quite yet. We don't see any damage on the Tier 3 towers, but certainly it shouldn't be that difficult for them to do so, considering the lead they've amounted. And the wall is back up, so that's that's another very big deal. Mm -hmm. And Miss Mayhem looking to delay this by popping off the cogs. Here comes the pipe, and now they're going to jump right on top of Luna. Luna pops off the BKB, doesn't have an Eclipse for 25 seconds. Sun flies onto Miss Mayhem, cooldown's going to follow. Luna may be the next target. It looks like she got slowed from the cooldown through the BKP. And now Twilight in the middle of the fight, flat canning damage, dealing a lot of damage to everybody. There's two deaths. We see Miss Mayhem going down as well as N3. And now Let My Crow Fly needs to make it back to the well just barely. Sven does drop again, but once again, a willing sacrifice as they're able to finish off TA as well. Back closer to the well, and Luna with the ultimate will come out. But it looks like everyone gets out of line of sight, and Luna's ultimate just loses its momentum. So the Eclipse uh, used in vain a little bit there, and now Twilight is just doing work on the Tier 3 tower in the middle lane. Gonna try and take that down. He still has the Aegis, hasn't used it yet. Oh, Micro. Oh, you're right. Micro does find off almost. the Skywrath Mage and gets a kill on he him. Almost, he almost died there. He almost... Yeah, and that's a little bit of a shame, too, because if Scarab Mage died around his team, they could get some much-needed regen. But instead, he's killed off on the side. Just a small misplay from Twilight. Generally speaking, you don't want to be popping your BKB before you die. Because when you have an Aegis, because you have an Aegis. <laughs> like, that's generally the best time yep, that to, to use it. Definitely is true, but... Uh, now we see crazy fights scattered. They're going to be able to get a kill on Let My Crow Fly. Miss Mayhem is trying to make it back to the well. Looks like he'll be able to do so. Fro has to be careful here. He's using everything he has on the Skywrath Mage. Skywrath Mage is now going to back up as a Chroma comes out with a Meld Strike and gets caught by Miss Mayhem. So got the magic will drop again. And now he's down really low on charges, sitting on only... Actually, he's only at six charges, so not particularly low, as he did get a kill or two there. But they're going to back up while they were able to take the racks down because of that aggressive pushing forward by Skywrath Mage. It drew the attention away from that. And that's the first racks of the game. So we still have three minutes left on this Aegis as they do pull Twilight home to heal up. And they can just go right back at it and try and take a second Rax here momentarily. He should just quickly buy up his Mantis style and whatever else he wants. Or he can just go straight for that Satanic. And he is going to go straight for the Satanic. Uh, so that's that's actually a huge problem. He He's currently lacking... No gold. He actually has exactly enough gold to purchase the entire Satanic right now. So it's a very um, possible option for him. And I'm sure he's going to actually do that. Uh, with the Age of Self for two minutes, he can definitely do so without being at too much of a risk. And Satanic, of course, is an item that's going to increase your life expectancy. And uh, definitely would be worthy of sacrificing buyback gold to purchase up. It's just like the argument of purchasing a BKB instead of saving for buyback. Well, you want to stay alive in the fights primarily, so uh, definitely worthwhile. And now we see the pushing out the top lane. Everyone's up here except for Got the Magic, who can be pulled in by Keeper of the Light momentarily. But he is getting jumped on here by a Chroma as well as Fro. He's going to force staff himself back, so opted to go for the force staff afterwards. And now the Mystic Flare is going to be enough to take down Shadow Demon. Uh, FRZ does TP in. And they're in pursuit of a Chroma, but I don't think they can catch up to him. He's a little bit too fast. If they get the four staff up in two seconds, maybe they can. It looks like instead Skyrath is getting pulled in by Keeper of the Light now as they go to the top lane. This th tier three is dropping rather quickly. That micro fly gets jumped on in the back end. He pops off the Eclipse. Some creeps in the area to tank a couple of hits. Presto surviving. Enkos surviving as well in the middle of the cogs. No one has dropped yet from T5K. Meanwhile, the Clockwork did sacrifice himself for that engage. Let Micro fly in the middle of it. Gets taken down by Skywrath Mage. And now Kato is going to get jumped on as well. He'll drop. Four heroes dead for Kato. And the TP was canceled there as well. So smart cancel, but frankly, with two racks down in Kato's lineup, this is probably going to be their, their death wish. Uh, death wish. Swan song, I guess. I don't think they're really going to last much longer. 
Yeah, and we see Enko is actually taking a little bit of damage as he goes into the well, but uh, you could see, I think both teams know where this game is headed as they're just uh, going into the well, sacrificing the Aegis at this point because it would have worn down in another minute. GG is called from N3, and that's going to be a wrap on this game. You can see the Mystic Flare just does so much damage. It is ridiculous. 12 stacks. Watch this heal. Oh, boy. It actually didn't look like that much because Frizz got pushed away. Frizz turns around, gets a stun, but he will drop. And the Throne Towers are getting worked down. Suspect to see Disconnects coming out momentarily. Twilight turns around. Will just regen enough even without having the Satanic on him. He has 8,000 gold in his bank. And he regens plenty putting those auto attacks onto TA. So it looks like T5K got the better of Kato in this game. Uh, just overall sound play. Kato, some missed opportunities, not the best execution at all stages of the game. And that definitely did set them back significantly. We are seeing some stat screen padding at the very moment. By your mint style. There we go. Screen Stat screen fully padded by, by Twilight. <laughs> A necessary feat and now we do see Enko's jumping on top of a couple of heroes here he's gonna get caught in with Miss Mayhem but Miss Mayhem probably gonna suffer a death momentarily as they just will not relent he gets silenced now gets hit with a concussive shot Iron Chill is there on top of him enough damage to take him out let my crow fly next target Getting hit by the concussive shot in a moment. He's going to pop off the BKB. Hit him with an Eclipse, but neither of these heroes are too phased by the Eclipse at this stage of the game. Turn around, Mystic Flare, death. And that should be... Oh my god, Miss Mayhem does not give up. Did he buy back to come in for this? And he, I, Yes, I he, did. he did. So Miss Mayhem came back trying to be a hero. It's not going to work. Someone should tell him it is not going to work. That was actually really funny. The Cogs pushed Enko out of the map, but then because he was out of the map, he just got pushed right back in. <laughs> that out of the map pushback is a thing of wonder. And now we do see the throne finally being taken down. So T5K are going to advance to the third game to figure out who's going to make it to the playoffs out of Group D. We don't know who their opponent will be quite yet. Kato are eliminated from the game. Great sportsmanship. We said saw them say gg good luck they also said thank you to the host of this tournament dota2.ca we want to thank them as well they've done a great job organizing it and making sure everything grows down smoothly and of course the prize pool 750 dollars t5k still in the running for it they have to try and win their next game to make it to the playoff stages i'm my john with me was el presidente you can find me at my john tv on twitter you can find el presidente at you can find me at el pres dota at twitter <laughs> And uh, be sure to stay tuned. I think we'll have one more game for the day coming up afterwards. So watch that one with us and have a good time.